Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. Part two of the Phoenix PHX video. We're gonna grade the PHX today. Before I get there, so first off, the Blue Santa tournament went off, amazing, uh, raised a ton of money. I'll update you guys on that in the fishing report I'll put up on Thursday. I also got the Skeeter FXR review done, so that'll be up early next week. Um, I do wanna make one appeal to you. I know a lot of you are starting to do your Christmas shopping. And if you don't support another channel on Tackle Warehouse, man, I would really, really appreciate it if you would support our channel. So I'll put a link right at the top of the description of this video below. You can copy that link. You can actually bookmark it on your computer. So anytime you shop using that link with Tackle Warehouse, Tackle Warehouse knows you are watching Ken Smith Fishing and they support our channel. And the more they see you shop, the more they support our channel. So I really, really appreciate it. A couple of you guys have reached out to me for that link. Uh, I'll put it again right at the top. And uh, anytime you use it, they support us. So thank you for that. And sorry if that was too much of a commercial, but uh, this is not inexpensive. And I need to replace a $500 microphone and I need some other cameras and some other stuff. So all that really, really helps us and with travel costs and everything as well. So, all right, let's talk about the PHX. So it was fun to go back now and review a boat, another boat in a, in a lineup after I had done some other boats. It's kind of what I'm looking forward to doing another Bass Cat. Um, so this was a really enjoyable review because I've seen other stuff since I did the 921 in boats that I was looking for or that I realized I want in my next boat. You know guys, I realized I've got a little more footage. So let's check out the remaining footage on the uh, Phoenix 21 PHX and then we'll come back and grade it here in a minute. Guys, we're not 100% confident what prop we're running, so we'll note that when we come off the water. But we are about a half a tank of fuel, so we're not completely full on fuel, but our live wells are completely full. So we're gonna do a whole shot right here. Like uh, 44 gallons, the live wells. Yeah, yeah, the big live wells. So we're gonna do a whole shot, see what we got. Probably help to trim it down. <laughs> no, I'm leaving that in. That's funny. Ready? Yep. Do it again. You didn't get all the way in it right off the bat. Yeah, but you didn't. You you stepped on and then you pressed down on it good. The boat really doesn't rise up a bunch. It's a good old shot. I think Nicky's was a little bit better. So we talked about this in the blazer. So you see there, we're holding pad. A little bit nose up, but in the teens. That's, that's a key to a rough water boat. If we get up to 20, you see it rolls over and planes off nice. That's a big deal. You want a boat that'll do that. I'm gonna lift the jack plate a little bit and see what happens. That's impressive. Hit a whole pad at 13 miles an hour. I mean, it's not really on pad, but it ain't porpoising, you know. All right, since it's dead calm, we're gonna make a little rough water. Be like NASCAR. Yeah. Turn left. That's ugly. That's bathtub water right there. That's solid.
Okay guys, so uh, stand in center line of the boat, tippy test. Basically no list. We've got a little bit of rock here, but it's 0.1 to 0.4, so no list. All the way to the port side on the driver's front end. And I told you all this with the 921. I knew this was a big wide boat, so I think I'm seeing 1.2, 1.4 back there. I'm trying to be still as I can. And then about the same up here. And then let's go to the back and do the same. But again, this is a big, wide, heavy, not heavy, but a big, wide, stable boat. So I'm sure that's not much as well. Right there, actually, let's stand right there. And then on the back to the port side in the rear, a little bit more to this side, but we've got our trolling motor batteries over here. So I think that's gonna be our difference right there. So there's our tippy test. We're gonna put it on the trailer. You know, after my experience on the uh, Charger, you know, I trashed it for how hard it was to put on the trailer. I've not filmed me putting them on the trailers, but you like them that immediately center and then go up and go secure. You want them to center themselves to the best of their ability. So let's, uh, let's stick this one on the trailer. See if I can hit it straight on one-handed. I've done this twice before, so I ought to be able to. And I still didn't hit it straight on. That was driver error. That's the way they're supposed to go on the trailer, boys. Okay, guys, so just in confirmation, it was a 24-pitch three-blade Fury was the prop we were running. I'm going to come back to this in the grading. Uh, we were only turning at 5,800 RPM, so I'll come back to that and the speed on the boat. But I wanted to show you Terry's man cave. Very cool setup. So he's got his foul weather gear. And what he's done is, instead of putting holes in the wall, he actually built these little shelves that are notched. Of course, there's his tackle and his, his workbench over there. And he's got his garage set up where the boat goes on that deeper side. But uh, you see, obviously, the guy's got a lot of street cred. Uh, he has done really, really well. And you'll see a lot of different tournament organizations up there. But he built uh, he built those notches on those shelves so he can, you know, doesn't have a ton of holes in the wall. And he can also shift his trophies around as he needs to to make more room for other stuff. And... I believe this guy's going to need more room in the future, uh, putting stuff up in this boat. And then, uh, I, I, by the way, I'm, I'm voiceovering it because I had a lot of echo, but then everybody needs a John Wayne in their man cave. So you can't have a really solid man cave without it. Now, by the way, this is something, those two fans, I did exactly the same thing when I kept my boat in a, in a storage facility. I bought those. I'll actually put a link below where I bought them and you just point them straight down and it keeps... Uh, you know, put the, park the boat up in the boxes and it keeps your uh, stuff dried out real well. Now, I'm not going to go back through the scoring. It's on the screen right now. You guys have all seen it. Um, if you, if you've not, if this is the first one of my videos you found, go right there to that playlist. If an eye just popped up on your, on your uh, device, if it allows that. And that's a playlist for all these we've done. I think this is either our ninth or our 10th boat we've done. And again, the Skeeter FXR is coming up. So that's the scoring and that's how it works. So let's start out right off the bat with fishability in the boat. So this is, remember Terry's boat's a 19, but we know what's in the 2021s. So in the 2021s, the front deck's really clean, two buttons up there, an up and a down trim switch on the starboard side, which can be moved to the port side, I've been told by just switching out some panels, pretty easy to do. And you can trim the motor up and down with your foot, which is a big deal to me. As I've already said, really clean front deck, not a lot of clutter up there. Good front deck width, so you can fish too, too abroad up there, if you will. Uh, the boat is stable as we thought it would be. It's a largely traditional box layout, which I like, some guys won't like. So I put it in positive and negatives as both. But what I do like in this boat that you didn't have in the 921 is there's tubes and places to store your rods in that center box. The 921, if you remember, the configuration I looked at had two center boxes and it's supposed to one big box where you can store rods. So I really like that. Um, and then the, the, neg the only real negatives on the boat is it does have higher gunnels. So some guys who flip don't like that. It doesn't really bother me that much. I actually like it in timber because then 
when a limb's on going down your gunnel, a lot of times it goes over your rods as opposed to raking your rods in. And I've already mentioned traditional box layout. Fit and finish, uh, good carpet, it's got pretty finish. It's, it's a pretty boat. Uh, it has that padded front deck on it. Uh, boat has a real solid feel running. Uh, I, I love the seats in it, as I've talked about. I really like the looks of three seats, the Bass Cat, the Blazer, and the Phoenix. But the Blazer needed more cushion in the seat, which I'm told they're working on. But uh, So really, my two favorite seats have been the Phoenix seats and the Bass Cat seats. I like the Skeeter seats too, by the way, but they're a whole different deal. I'll get to those. Um, good driver and passenger leg room. I love that there's separate live wells. I've talked about that. It allows you to control your load. Uh, two, so there's two 22 gallon live wells, a lot of live well in that boat. Good retractable rod straps. Now we've discovered since we did the Phoenix, the coffin lid, uh, live well, uh, rod box lids on the Vexus, which I like. And you saw how that makes it easier to get in and out of the boxes with the rods up there. And I like the blazer that's done the double, where there's one that's connected to the rod box and one that's connected above the rod box. But the way we started scoring boats was if you had a good retractable one, we scored you well. And if you had the rubber one, we scored you poorly. So we're staying with that scoring here. This is one of the boats, and there's only a couple of them, that all six of the boat menu, or the, the fiberglass shops that I talked to was said this was one of the best built boats. So that's, that's good, good feedback from guys who cut boats open weekly that we tear up. Uh, it's got the multiple dash options according to how you want to configure your graphs. I love the easy to remove dash, something you could pop in and out for when you're fishing with your wife or with a partner or when it's raining or when it's nice out, you can move that in and out. I love that idea. Uh, cockpits, uh, the sea deck is cockpit flooring is available. Um, you can't find it on the website. I'm gonna knock them on the website a little bit in a minute, but uh, I, I want sea deck flooring in the cockpit of my boat and they do make that available. And then it does have slam latches throughout, which is something I really like. And I talked about in this boat how they have the super high lips with the channel next to them to keep those boxes dry with those slam latches. So those are cool. I really like those. Uh, the ice chest doesn't have a latch. That's a problem for me. Uh, there's no way ice stays as good in there as it would in a box that really locks and seals down nicely. Uh, I talked about this. So we're talking fit and finish here. I talked about those silver stickers. I saw another Phoenix this weekend that the stickers had come off of. Now, by the way, I also saw in the parking lot a totally blacked out Phoenix that had no Phoenix stickers on it in, in the parking lot at the Blue Santa Terminal. I don't know whose boat that is, but that's really good looking. Now, black boats are like black cars, right? They're, they're beautiful when they're clean, but they're hard to keep clean. But it was a really good looking rig. I liked it a lot. So I knock them for that. I have not heard anybody having a problem with those white stickers coming off, but any raised badging you put below the rub rail around the water line, you're going to have a problem with. And, and I've seen Phoenixes have problems with that. So, uh, And I think, by the way, I said in Vexus, I think I'll have the same problem. We see more and more of those boats on the market. Uh, and then I don't knock it for it, but I did note, you remember how much I like having finished fiberglass with sea deck or some kind of rubber flooring. My Ranger has just a hard rubber flooring in the, in the bottom of the rod box. That should be on all those front boxes. There is no reason to have carpet in boxes. It's gonna get wet, it's gonna be heavy, it's gonna mildew. There's just no reason to have them up there. So fit and finish, I scored 17. By the way, the same score I scored the 921 Pro XP. Performance where I scored it a little bit lower. I scored it a 15, I scored the PH, excuse me, the 921 a 16. It's got good lift for a big boat. It's a dry ride. It seems like it would be an excellent big water boat. Everybody that I know that has fished out of or owned both of these boats will say the 921's a little sportier, it's a little faster, but the PHHX is a little bit better ride. And they say both of those are fractional. So I'll come back to that. Uh, it, it's easy to control the nose on the boat. It had a pretty good hole shot for a three blade, 24 pitch fury. It landed soft when I created that bathtub out there by doing circles and then drove back through the middle of it. It landed really soft. Uh, I love that it has the analog gauge options mixed in there. You saw I drove this boat in the teens on pad with no porpoising. That nose just stayed steady. And again, in rough water, that is a big deal when that boat will ride at really low speed without the nose wanting to do this. So 
I was really impressed. I think that's the slowest speed I've been able to get any boat to stay on pad at is what I got that one to. Boat does have a little bit of side slop. I felt it just like I did in a 921. And, and here's where I dinged it on performance. And, and I'm even going to put a caveat on this. So it's slower than the 921. And everybody that I talked to said it's a couple of miles an hour slower. This boat was maybe five miles an hour slower. Now, I told Terry, I don't think he's getting full throttle in this boat. I think he has a hot foot link issue. He was only turning the 24 pitch 5,800 RPMs. And there's lots of boats in this same size class that that motor can turn that 24 pitch well over 6,000 RPM. He actually talked to his dealer, and his dealer said the same thing. His dealer said that boat should be turning over, that motor should be turning over 6,000 RPMs. So, if Terry calls me back later and says uh, I was only getting 91% throttle or whatever that number is, and by the way, I had that problem when my motor was brand new. I had the first four-stroke Mercury in Texas. My Serial number ends in 000077. So I'm sure I had one of the first ones that wasn't a prototype. And I had this problem with, with it not getting full throttle because of the way the hot foot was set up. I think Terry has that same problem. If he does, this boat would have scored a 16 from performance, which would have been excellent. But it didn't, and I can only judge what I saw, so I scored it a 15. If he calls me later and says it does run 70, 71, with, with a full tournament load, I'll, I'll revise this score on this boat in the comments, and I'll revise it in a future video as well. Uh, all I can tell you is what I saw, and that you ought not to buy a boat before you ride in a boat. And I'm not talking about one off the showroom floor that doesn't have anything in it. Look, all these dealers have guys that are pro staff. That's, that's what they're supposed to do is take you out and give you a ride. So, if you're thinking about this boat, ask them who one of their pro staff guys is and don't let him unload it. Go ride in it and see how it performs. Enough on performance on that boat. So 15 good on the performance on the uh, 21 PHX. Amenities, mini here. Uh, it's got the driver's cleat so you can tie off right there from the driver's seat. Rod box set up for port or starboard, which I love. You can put a big graph in the dash if you want to do the single dash or you can do the shroud where you can do the double graphs on the dash. It's got really cool space in the back to put your prop and your tools. It's got the, my favorite place, the net storage in the floor. I love that. It's got a spot to relieve yourself on the back deck. It's got good rod straps. Now, we've seen now maybe better options in the Vexus or even with Blazer doing the double, but we're judging it based on how we started judging boats, which was just give me a good retractable strap as opposed to a rubber, as opposed to a rubber bungee cord. Um, it's got a remote plug option available which I like, uh, ventilated storage, which I like, uh, and a snake light, which I love. That's a cool deal. Now, a couple of these you can get, but you can't find them on their website because the website just a little, well, I'll get to it. Uh, I love the hooks and the bag hangers inside the front deck box. Obviously, the guy who designed that is a fisherman, wanted, wanted the guy who fishes a lot. And same thing with the tool holder, where they're out of the way where you can't kick the handle off your scissors. From what I understand, there is still not a USB charger or a plug in a box anywhere in that boat. Um, it's got the, uh, the battery straps as opposed to something that really locks them down in place. It, it really needs a better old crap handle for the, for the uh, right hand of your co-angler. I don't know why they're not doing that, but it, it really needs a better one. And I've said that on a bunch of boats now. The seats don't adjust, adjust forward and back. I really like that in my boat. Uh, it's got... Uh, Decent sump access. You see the asterisk there, so I didn't I didn't ding it for that, but you do have to pull a battery to get in your sump, which is not a huge deal to me. Um, it is a single fuel tank, so uh, I would prefer a dual. I don't ding them for that because I haven't dinged any boats for that, but just personally, I would like to have a dual fuel tank. Uh, and then there's really nothing uh, revolutionary or new that I saw from an amenity standpoint in this boat. All the boat is really well laid out. Uh, and, and what I would call kind of standard amenities, right? So I scored it 16 good. Trailers and other stuff. Uh, so trailer step's an option. It's got nice LED backup lights, swing tongue. There's a parking brake option. Can't find it on the website, but it's there. Uh, leaf springs with shocks on this boat. It's got a good winch and jack, uh, which is a big deal. I didn't realize what a big deal it was until I got in the charger. 
uh, really good dealer access, at least in our part of the country, and I think in a lot of parts of the country. And that's a big deal. I want a dealer less than 100 miles from me. Guys, I kind of missed this uh, in the review, and I realized it afterwards. So in their live wells, there's actually, uh, you normally pump out. So you use the electronic pump to pump out your, uh, your live wells. But there is actually a manual plug that you can unscrew in the bottom of the plug to uh, drain your live wells manually. And where, for example, my Ranger has the, uh, the little flip um, lever on the wall beside the driver's seat to do that, uh, that's handy, but I have seen so many of those go out. And if they go out, unfortunately, and they're open, your live well won't hold water. So, again, this is one of those things Phoenix did that's just, it's a simpler version. Maybe it's not as cool of a version, but I think I'd rather have the manual version where I don't have to worry about a lever going out in my boat and me not being able to use my live wells. Let's see, uh, negatives. Uh, well, uh, the fiberglass fenders, you have to pay to get the upgrade there. Uh, and then, uh, again, more, the website. I mean, it's just, even when you click on features right now on the 21 PHX, it shows you the 2019 features. And that just seems to be, in today's world, something that a boat manufacturer would pay attention to. There's not a ton of pictures on the, on the, in, on the website on the boat. So I don't score them negative for that, but it's just stuff that kind of bothered me. Cut stuff I thought probably should be improved upon. So, uh, 16, good on trailers and other stuff. So I score the Phoenix 21 PHX, good, almost excellent. Remember I scored the, uh, the 921 excellent uh, at an 81. But uh, again, it boiled down to just a significant loss of speed on this boat. But uh, if, if I have a bunch of guys comment below, and actually more specifically, if Terry finds out that, that his boat's not getting full throttle, I'll be glad to come back and bump this up to an 81 and score it an 81, which would give it another point in performance. But for now, I'm gonna stick to my guns on my score of 80 on the boat, which says to you, if I go to a Phoenix, I'm gonna be in a 921. I'm not gonna be in a PHX, just based upon what I've seen between the boats. I talked about the contingency program on the on the, on the the Phoenix already. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the highest scoring contingency program for me because I fish mostly FLW stuff. And it's you can win more money fishing FLW stuff out of a Phoenix than any other boat. And uh, so there you go, that's the 19, that's the highest score of any contingency program. So that's my review on the Phoenix 21 PHX. Uh, coming up Thursday will be a uh, Rayburn Report and the Blue Santa Tournament. It was a great event. It was a fiasco for us, but you'll get a little kick out of all of what we went through. We we killed some boats this weekend. And then uh, next week, I'll start. Uh, I've already shot the video. I've not edited any, edited any of it, but I did the Skeeter FXR. And the next boat, I'm not sure what it'll be. It'll probably be the Falcon. I think will be the next boat if I can get over to uh, Lake Fork and get that done. So thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for your support. If, you, if you're going to shop at Tackle Warehouse, I would really appreciate it if you'd use the link below. And if you bookmark it and use it in the future too, guys, I'd really appreciate that. So I think that's everything for this uh, for this Tuesday video. And I'll have a video up for you guys on Thursday as well. So please uh, stick around. Thanks, guys.